Uh, so National Hot Dog Month is July, and although the official National Hot Dog Day was last week, you know, real hot dog lovers celebrate the whole month, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, do you ever not celebrate hot dogs? I know. And living in the South, that's like every birthday party, barbecue. Yes, you gotta um, have them. Baseball yeah, well, know, game. As, as a father with three kids, I can guarantee that if I put hot dogs on the grill, they're gonna get eaten. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, they're one of those things too, you can warm them up for a week. Oh yeah. And they're amazing, they're just so amazing. So, we are here today at... Kerrigan's. Kerrigan's Public House yep. in downtown Birmingham. Yep. And this is Noah Galloway. <laughs> you guys know who that is, right? This is Noah Galloway. Um, so excited to be here. Thank you for oh, lunch, no, for inviting yes, me. No, this is, I know when, when y'all said y'all wanted to do something and you know, for hot dogs, yeah, this isn't a hot dog in a bun, but the first place okay. I thought of was Kerrigan's yeah. because they have the best corn dog. Look around. at that. It is, yes. I From have the corn never dog seen on a it, to the corn fries, dog like that. The sauce. I mean, this is the first thing that came to my mind. So I was like, that's amazing. We got to come here. Oh my gosh. So, how long have you been eating these? Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I don't eat them all the time. Yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't. <laughs> but no, I try to get uh, up here into Birmingham. And actually, like, you know, Birmingham's growing so much. It There's is. so much going on. And I was just talking to one of the girls here that, you know, this is my place I go to. When I drive up from Shelby County, this is where I come. And so, you know, know, at least once a month, I'm having one of these, these corn dogs. So guys, once a month, you can probably <laughs> find him here. If you want us to stalk out Kerrigan's, you can probably catch Noah Galloway here. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about um, about you. I appreciate your graciousness and, and this interview and that sort of stuff. Um, you have a book out, Living With No Excuses. Yeah. We happen to have a copy of it right here. Um, and so it's on the bookshelves now. It is, yep. And it's called Living With No Excuses because? Well, I mean, you know, I've, I've always tried to do my best to live a life without excuses. I mean, we all have things that happen, but right. even before I was injured, that's how I try to live my life. So when I got injured, I went through a lot of depression. You know, that's one thing that I talk a lot about in this book mm -hmm. is I'm very open and honest about my depression. And it was hard to write. When the book came out, I was stressed out. The people that read it wouldn't like me, but I have found that it's connected with a lot of people. I'm not sure. just veterans, not just people with disabilities, right. but because I was open and honest about the mistakes I made, the struggles I went through, and then how I got out of it. You know, so I talk about that. Of course, I talk about Dancing with the Stars and yes, everything well, else. Yes, you would have to. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I gotta sell some copies. You know? <laughs> so yeah, I, you know, I did the book, and you know, the Living With No Excuses is just a tagline that I use to remind myself and others that there's always something else we can do when we hit that obstacle in life. Let's tell those folks who are watching who maybe don't know your story, let's just give them a very condensed version of, of well, your story. Well, I, I uh, was going to UAB when 9-11 happened, dropped out and went straight into the military, served with the 101st under General Petraeus, was in the invasion of Iraq in 2003, went back in 2005 and that's when I was injured. I woke up six days later in a hospital, lost my left arm, left leg, injuries to my right hand, right leg, my jaw was shattered. So there was a lot that I had to deal with. And then over time, it took a couple of years, it was my kids that motivated me to be a better person. Oh, wow. Get back into fitness, push myself, challenge myself. And that led to all the races I did, the cover of Men's Health, then Dancing with the Stars, and it just has kept going from there. What a pathway. The journey to here has been something else. Oh, it has, yes. What's your favorite moment from Dancing with the Stars? Oh, I think my favorite moment from Dancing with the Stars, I mean, the people I met, that's what was incredible. I mean, I'm still in contact with Sharna Burgess, my dance partner, the other dancers, the crew, the staff, everything, hair and makeup, everyone I stay in contact with. But That's awesome. I think my best part of the moment was when it was over. <laughs> You're just done? <laughs> yes. I, look, I'm not a dancer. And yes, I dance with a beautiful woman. My friends point that out all the time. But when she's fussing at you every day, you know, you know, you, you kind of, she kind of loses that appeal. You know, I say that jokingly. I love Sharna. But, yeah, it was, I mean, we rehearsed nonstop every day. And I'm a, I'm a perfectionist, I'm not, I was not the best dancer out there. So I was doing my best to improve each week. And I think that's what got me through each week were people supporting me and what I was doing and the challenges I faced and then right. just trying my best. Right. So the fact that I came in third, you know, I did the whole 10 weeks. I never that's thought awesome. that would happen. That's awesome. So no, it was exciting to have made it the entire way and then it was over. Right. And and say it was done. Well, and so many people know you from Dancing with the Stars. You know, most of us in Alabama just claim you as friend, neighbor, and, and colleague, you know, yes. so that's kind of fun that everybody knows Alabama who you are. Alabama has been incredibly supportive. 
and that's what I like. That's what I love about being like everyone thought I was on a move away. No, this is oh, my wow. home. This is yeah. where I stay. In fact, when I did Dance with the Stars, I refused to go to, to move to LA. Sharna moved to Birmingham. No way, I yes. did not so know we that. we rehearsed every week Goodness. in Cahaba Heights and flew back and forth for the live show. So did your kids get to know her too? Yep, they did. How special is that? Yeah, and she's just an amazing person. Where she's from in Australia is very similar to being in Alabama. Wow. You know, it's uh, just relaxed, everyone's polite, mm -hmm. so she really felt at home. But instead of possums, they have kangaroos. Yeah, you know, that would be cooler if we had that, or, or koala bears. Oh, like, how about to, that? You know, she should bring some over. The and be over to koala bears. I know, right? Amazing. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Um, another thing that's near and dear to you that I think that people really respect you for is the mentorship aspect of what you do. Yes. I am, you know, I do a lot with, I, two of my sisters are educators. My older sister is a professor at UAB. My younger sister teaches special ed. And with them, I do a lot with schools and with kids. Mm -hmm. And I work with kids. I work with people who have gone through injuries and disabilities because I've been down that road and I want to share that experience. That's sure. what helped me. And so, no, I love, and that's one thing about when it comes to social media. Like I always tell people, I'm very picky about what goes out. I'd rather lose followers by avoiding politics and religion than to step on any toes and upset any of my followers. Because I have a lot of kids that follow me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Right. My kids do, mm -hmm. and so I make sure everything is <clears throat> something I'd want my kids to see. Absolutely. That's a good policy to have, yeah. especially today when social media, while I think it's a good thing and it's a great way to communicate yes. and keep in touch. But it has its, it does. its good and its, it's bad. It's a little scary. Oh, and we all have said it. it's a good yeah. thing there was no social media when we were growing You're up. You're not kidding. You, that would have eliminated <laughs> There's no a lot record. of jobs, yes. <laughs> but yeah, now it's like, and I've, I've told my kids. You know, it's like one day my son was filming me and my friend talking at my house and he noticed it and I said, buddy, look, what if I said something joking to my friend, but then it got out yep. and was bad. I said, do you like eating every day? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, then I explained to him that we got to be careful about, and they should be cautious of that. Not Absolutely. because I've gotten a little bit of attention, but we should all think about that. And I point that out to kids all the time. When we look at our favorite rock star, rap star, whoever they are, they didn't get that way being like the character they portray in their music. Absolutely. They work hard. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And I, it is, and that's why I tell kids, I'm like, look, when you have these people you look up to, they are portraying a character mm -hmm. in music. That's but true. behind the scenes, they are competing with thousands of other people that want to take their job. Just and like it, the rest of us are. Yes, everything. Yes. So the more professional you are, the better your chances are. That's awesome. Who inspires Noah Galloway? You know, it's, it's going to sound corny. I always hate saying it, but it's my corny children. Corny with a corn dog. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> my kids are my inspiration. They're what got me through my depression. And even to this day, no matter what comes across, you know, my desk as an officer, I'd still get offers to do TV shows, things like that. And most of them I turned down mm -hmm. because I asked myself two questions. How's this going to affect my kids? And what lessons are they going to teach them? And if either one of those are negative, I don't do it because wow. I'm still, my kids are at an age, 9, 11, and 14, that what I'm doing is important. Sure it is. And I'm still trying to encourage them to be that I got best news they for you. Be. When they're 30, 30 and 34 yeah. and 36, they're still going to yes. be looking so, to see what dad's doing. It's my kids that I look to for motivation all the time. That's awesome. Okay, I know I'm probably not going to get all the answers, but what's next for you? So, I mean, I've, it's been it's been interesting. It's been a lot of coming and going and then turning down big things that mm -hmm. could have made a big deal, but I yes. felt like what was important yeah. was important. Sure. And But no, there's some big things coming, possibly out of this book and, and wow. other things. So a movie? I mean, who a knows? A movie? Who knows? Who knows? Let's fingers crossed. I'd Is love to put a pool in. I'd love to put a pool in at <laughs> my house. So if that happened, it would be great. But I do. I stay Can I come busy. swim? I'll yes. help. <laughs> I'm actually taking my kids this weekend to Wisconsin. I'm friends with Donald Driver. He plays the Green Bay Packers, mm -hmm. and every year he has a celebrity softball tournament. Wow. And I go, and this year I'm taking the kids. Okay. And so I've got a what lot part of travel. Of Wisconsin? Come, uh, Appleton. Don't know that. Right outside of Green Bay. Okay. Yep. I know Georgia County. Very small town, yeah. Okay. Yep. That's pretty cool. All right, so we just need to stay tuned to find out what's yes, going on with Noah Yes, Galloway. I'm excited about what's happening. So. All right, guys, <laughs> you may know him from Dancing with the Stars. He's our friend, our neighbor, our Alabama hero.